with this latest news on the Hornets looking to trade. Basically, they're looking to offload Gordon Hayward by attaching a first round pick to a deal. So that's it. Two years left on Gordon on his four year, $120 million deal that they signed when they swooped in and took him away from the Celtics. And what do you know? They want out. And again, it's understandable because they have young stars here that they want to pay. Uh, Rozier's obviously worked out really well for them. And you've got Bridges and you've got LaMelo and Bridges wants a max deal and they want to be able to do that. So they want to get out for Gordon. And this sounds to me like they are giving Gordon Hayward away. Who wants him? Do you want him, Bobby? It's not going to work. I, I do. Part of me wants him because I, I thought he was such a perfect fit next to the Brown and Tatum tandem. Of course, his playmaking has been dearly missed ever since. The biggest se- reason last year was a disaster is because they didn't replace him. So I think people start his value that they lost there. But I, the money doesn't work. There's no real way to match it. What are you going to send? Tice, White, and Al. It's Al. Al, a, yeah, like Al. You, you're not doing that. And, and plus the reliability questions that a lot of people in our chat had and a lot of fans had in general really came to fruition there. He's gotten hurt every single year in Charlotte. So you don't go back to that. You, I, I think there was certainly some friction on the team over his role and the coach and everything like that that came out. And you, you just don't want to circle back to that era. I mean, how awful was that era looking back on it? Just all the disdain, all the injuries. All the dysfunction. The disdain, I don't know if it was personally directed at Hayward. It was directed at Steven's blind faith in Hayward over the yes. guys who were there. And so I don't know that Hayward did anything to, uh, you know, bring that on himself. I think it was, he was Brad's boy. Brad gave him the benefit of the doubt. And you had two guys in Tatum and Brown who were like, I'm better than this friggin' dude right now. Why is he playing? You know, and not Tatum as much as Brown. Why is he playing over me? And again, you're also talking about hungry mouths like Terry Rozier and Mar- Morris. You know, Marcus Morris on that team. And everybody's like, I'm pretty friggin' good too. So that just, you had about four guys on that team who had a beef, you know. I will uh, say though, this looked like a, con- a potential budding contender in the East here. And it's going in the wrong direction, certainly now. They lose their coach that they signed or agreed to have head coach them and now they're looking for a coach again uh, Kenny Atkinson backing out of that and now they're talking about bringing Russ in and this is a report we've heard several times the possibility that you could be flipping Hayward for Russ which Lakers fans should be very excited about I mean think of Hayward and Russ massive spot. upgrade massive upgrade <laughs> Even with the health concern. And now you're trying to fit in Russ next to Melo and Bridges and all these guys down in Charlotte. And is this just Jordan saying, I've got this Jordan athlete here I can bring in and sell and <laughs> have under my wing? It doesn't make any sense. I think this just brings Jordan's ownership here further in the question. It hasn't been a great ownership tenure down there. And it's probably a team that's not going to reach its peak and compete with the Celtics at the highest level here. I mean, they're still looking to make the playoffs for the first time with this core. Uh, and they've been at their best with Hayward, right? Every time he's gotten hurt, they've been in a good spot and they've fallen apart after that. So this isn't good news by any angle. He had, they had Charlotte. the, I remember Bobby, we were talking about this during the year there, the on off numbers with Hayward in terms of the impact that he had on that team and uh, just winning, the record alone. Yeah. Yeah. Was, was, was substant was significant. Um, so they really do suffer when he's not out there. And again, in the right role, um, he's still a really good player because he's 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 he just does everything. He's smart. He's unselfish. He moves the basketball. He can handle it. He's a facilitator. Honestly, and what's, what's the funny? Is, what's funny it's is, the same combo we just had. Gordon Hayward's mentality about basketball is what you actually want to inject into Tatum and Brown's veins to get them to be more complete players and recognize. I loved it. his game. I don't yeah, think and, anyone ever appreciated it enough. And, and you recognize didn't get the full version, but yeah, recognize you have the requisite skills to go off when needed or when the opportunity is there. But sometimes what the game needs is something else. So just do that and don't worry so much about scoring all the time. He's just very good at that. Um, and he's good at looking for a shot and he's good at, I mean, how many, shots do you feel he forced ever you know like everything he's just he makes the right read you talk about how many times the Celtics ran into issues with players having the ball and not making the right read Gordon Hayward always makes the right read he really does he's that kind of player so you would like a piece of that you know um 
but again, it doesn't work here because now you're talking three wings where you've already got two. The only way you bring in a guy like Hayward is if in a separate deal you were going to move one of your other wings for some other big blockbustery landmark position altering trade it's just not going to happen so the hayward fit here doesn't work but yes my god if you didn't care about money and you didn't care about what it took to get him and it was easy and you could just take gordon hayward's skill set and plant him on the celtics hell yeah you would do that you just there's really not a way to make it happen <sighs> there's ways to make it happen i'm just not willing to do it if he's this injury prone. I think we've learned that he is. It hasn't been a season he's gone through and his reliability and his ability to come back have been put in the question. Here. I know, so, but the, 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 co- the Wellesley police and the cheese shop would be so happy, right? Yeah. Yeah. I, I, again, if, if he's healthy and you feel good about him and he's had, a, he's not even available. The fact that he's, they're trying to get rid of him here just shows it's a damaged asset and you're not going to give up Horford for that. You're not going to give up smart for that. If this was Hayward and you were really sure you were getting Hayward, I think you do look at those two things, but right now I think you're out of this. They're going to do the rust thing probably. And my head's going to spin. Yeah. Yeah. It's uh, it was, it was, uh, it's a bad off season and it might've worked out for you anyway. Um, I, I guess you, you still look back on the, management of that cap space and think and again somebody here it. saying like we said they needed another wing what are you saying no i mean you need a you need a you need a wing who's willing to come in and accept playing 18 19 minutes a game who can spell tatum and brown who's going to cost you 12 13 14 million dollars not a 30 million dollar luxury piece to stick in your bench like that's bad business you would think like i said if you weren't thinking about money Yes, Gordon. Hay- you would take a Gordon Hayward on your team. He's a good basketball player. And he makes you better. But it's just, I don't know how. You'd have to move a lot of things to make this work. It'd have to be Horford probably, right? Horford for sure. Yeah, so there's a world in in which Hayward's right that I would think about doing that, but where he's not, no way. Well, well let's put it this way. Would you do Horford for uh, Hayward for 30 you know, for for two more years, if you got a pick out of the deal to give Horford away for twenty six, and 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 live with live without Horford here, you're asking the wrong guy that question. <laughs> that's the only deal. That's the way the deal works. But then they would have to take on Hayward. They would have to take on uh, Horford. No, I, I I you just saw what Horford did last year. I think that's super valuable going forward and. There's the potential that he could be a minimum guy for years to come after this season, which I think is valuable as well. I think the underrated part of this Hayward thing and the reason that the there will be if you got rid of Horford this year, there would be a Horford round three. He would come back. You'd you get him. So? He'd, he'd return in another year. Yeah, maybe it's a wink, wink, and it's just salary relief <laughs> for the Hornets. And he gets right in Charlotte this time. He had his Oklahoma hiatus, and now he has a Charlotte hiatus for a year. Imagine a Celtics team that's a one seed heading into the final week, final two weeks of the season, and then Rob and Hayward both go down. Yeah, there's a buyout of Horford at the at the March deadline. I don't think that's how it works, but uh, this, this isn't happening. It's fun to kick around and it's good memories. I mean, this was our first rendition of the show, the, the Hayward Celtics. So I really love that year. And they were rolling when he was looking good in the bubble. Remember that team was probably better than the team we just watched. But the funny, the funny thing is, is like, you know, everybody thinks we have our roles on the garden report and Jimmy and I are the, are the cynics, but like Jimmy and I were like, this team's the best team in basketball and they're winning the title and nobody's getting in their way. I mean, we were so bullish on that team because I really did think that that they had something going until Hayward got hurt there and that really derailed everything. But they were, I thought they were a wagon going and headed to the finals. I don't know if they would have been able to beat the Lakers that year, but I, I they were I the think most healthy. They would have, but they were the best, bu- they were the best bubble team. I mean, them in Phoenix, <laughs> but they were the best yeah. bubble team. You know, they were so good. Yeah, I, that's a good conversation. Which team was better than at their peak of the Celtics this year? It's probably pretty close, but yeah, uh, he gets hurt and everything changes. The and bigs, Kemba too. I think he's bigs, probably the swing. The bigs that year, and then Kemba was tough. Yeah.